before we get started with this video, I have a confession to make, and it's that I've already been dishonest with you. Although I like Into the Pit a whole lot, it is not the best Fazbear Fright story. It may have been the one to start it all, and has one of my favorite versions of Spring Bonnie in it, but there are actually much smaller fish to fry. Fazbear Frights, for those of you who don't know, is an ongoing book series written by Scott Cawthon and a series of other authors, as various stories from the FNAF universe are told. Well, not the main universe, but its own. Because these books don't affect the games all that much, most FNAF fans disregard them. However, the Fazbear Fright series does have its own fanbase backing it. And I have to admit, a lot of what you can read here is better than the story of the mainline games. Probably because most of these stories are isolated events that just marginally overlap with one another in the form of the epilogue stories. That said, keep in mind that these are basically the FNAF equivalent of Goosebumps books, so don't expect horror on the levels of Hereditary or even Texas Chainsaw. While most of these stories don't exactly end well for whatever protagonist we're following, these books are pretty tame when it comes to describing explicit gore or horrific events, mostly relying on implication rather than blatantly showing. In fact, even though it's not the story in today's video, I do want to quickly recommend the story Jump for Tickets, which is about a boy who wants to win a ton of tickets at Freddy's to get a new video game console. For such a tame setup, it has one of the most gruesome endings to a short story I've ever read. It's actually kind of cool just how creative Scott can get with something this dark. But with that being said, today's story is actually about a character I talked a lot of shit about in the past. Out of Stock is the third story in Fazbear Fright's number two, Fetch, making it the seventh story overall if we count the epilogues, and it was written by Carly Ann West. The setup of this story revolves around Oscar, a sophomore in high school living with his mother, and who seemingly always misses out on big opportunities because he devotes a lot of time to helping his mother work at a nursing home in town. I want to quickly cover Oscar as a character because I actually really like this arc Archetype. Oscar is, at his core, a good person, but the world around him is always interfering with him and preventing him from claiming any of the rewards he's earned in it. It builds frustration inside him, and you know that at some point, he'll reach a breaking point. This kind of time bomb feeling is generally enjoyable to follow and already makes Oscar an interesting character. Oscar is accompanied by two friends for most of the story, those being Isaac and Raj. Isaac and Raj don't get a lot of characterization outside of just being Oscar's friends, but that's alright for this story. Something I should also mention is the time the story takes place in. Most Fazbear Fright stories take place in modern times and are usually called out on when they don't. As such, in this universe, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is known for being a creepy, desolate place with a bad history, and was shut down a while ago, with the stories around it being a big fad. Oscar took an interest in this and became excited when he saw a new toy line coming out that centered around his favorite character, Plush Trap. The Plush Trap Chaser is what it's called, not described very differently from the in-game counterpart you can see in FNAF 4. In fact, its gimmick as a toy mirrors its behavior in FNAF 4. It moves around in the dark and freezes in the light, making for a game of red light, green light, or something. I've said it before, but in FNAF 4, Plush Trap is my least favorite antagonist, as his minigame that interrupts gameplay not only stinks, but it also doesn't make good use of the character's design. Plush Trap's design is very fun to look at, but it's also underutilized in this game. This story makes great use of not only Plush Trap's design, but also makes him a much scarier threat than he was in FNAF 4. So Oscar, after working with his mom for so long, finally saves up enough money to buy one but unfortunately gets called to work. While he's there, an old man he's taking care of basically tells him to grab life by the kahunas. Take whatever opportunities you can get. So Oscar makes a new plan, and goes to the mall with his friends to purchase a plush trap chaser there. However, when he gets to the front of the line, he finds out they are officially out of stock. This of course upsets Oscar, but he's a crafty teen, so he sneaks around back where he hears employees discussing something disturbing that someone brought in. Oscar finds out a plush strap chaser was returned by a customer for its disturbing appearance, and the staff think about calling the police. However, Oscar leaves some money on the counter and makes off with it, running away from security with his friends. Now they have it, the plush strap chaser center to the story at hand. And this is where things definitely tend to skew my opinion more towards book plush trap being superior to the original. Oscar and co unbox the plush trap and are incredibly disturbed. The teeth, which should be sharp and pointy, instead resemble human teeth and are connected to gums. The eyes as well, although they should look glassy and shiny, are instead wet and resemble human eyes. Oscar kind of thinks, oh shit, what did I just steal? and then they try to experiment with it. The friends, no matter how hard they try, can't seem to turn it on. First they put a 9 volt battery in it, which doesn't do anything, then they flip a switch on its foot, which doesn't do anything, then they try turning the lights off since it moves around in the dark, and it doesn't do anything. At one point they put a butter knife in its mouth to try and open the jaws, 
but the knife actually snaps in half when they try this. Overall, it's creepy, but it doesn't do anything, so Oscar just keeps it in his room. You might think this is a bad play on Oscar's part, but no, for the first few days, nothing happens. Plush Trap doesn't move an inch. It's not until the night before Halloween that the story resumes, and actually bears resemblance to classic home invasion and slasher movies. Oscar and his friends plan out what they're going to do for Halloween, but Oscar's mom calls him, asking for his help at the nursing home that night. Oscar tells his mom off for the first time and hangs up in an outburst that really shows how Oscar's character has changed since he's become more proactive with getting what he wants. He decides to try and activate Plush Trap one more time while a storm rages overhead. He eventually finds a USB port in the side of its jaw and connects it to a wall charger. However, lightning strikes and the power goes out with the socket seemingly exploding. This did it. In the dark, Oscar and his friends hear the plush trap chaser say its first words of the story. Lights out. This moment in the story is the oh shit moment, when you realize your main characters are kind of fucked. Oscar and his friends manage to get out, but begin to hear wood breaking. The plush trap chaser is beginning to chew through the wood of the door, which also sharpens its teeth and makes its gums bleed. Oscar and his friends find out really quickly how screwed they are if they let plush trap get to them. So through a variety of flashlights with dying batteries, phone lights with dying batteries, and a number of shut doors, they try to make their escape. Arguably the best part of this house section is when the teens try to hide on top of the wardrobe, since plush trap is too short to climb up it. Plush trap begins to gnaw at the legs of the wardrobe to make Make it wobble, but they freeze it with light. However, when they get back down, Oscar hears Isaac's voice and takes his light off Plush Trap for a moment, and when he points it back, its teeth are inches from Isaac's leg. The reveal that Plush Trap can mimic voices is just a terrifying addition to its character, and something it uses multiple times in the story. Eventually, the boys escape the house on bikes and try to lure Plush Trap to a set of train tracks. They figure that with the huge lights a train has, Plush Trap will be frozen on the tracks as they run him over. As Oscar and his friends ride, they find out just how fast Plush Trap really is, as it's gaining on them pretty quickly. They lose Plush Trap and veer off into some woods and down a hill to get across the tracks. Once they're on the tracks, Oscar tells his friends to get off the tracks. This climactic moment really builds Oscar up as he wants to keep his friends safe and take a chance, even if the risk is his own death. With a train on its way, Oscar waits for Plush Trap to come down the hill. As it comes down, it takes a leap at Oscar, who just barely gets out of the way as the train hits Plush Trap and destroys it. It's a happy ending! Oscar makes up with his mother, and that's the end of it. So why did I call this the best Fazbear Fright story? Well, it's repurposed a character and made them not only a memorable and iconic threat, but one that had its own mystery behind it. It's never revealed in the story just how this plush trap was made or why it acted the way it did, and it can be best said that withholding that information only made the character better. Later on in the Stitch Wraith Stingers, we do find out who made this plush trap, and to be honest, it's kind of a letdown. It's true that your mind can always manifest something scarier and darker than the truth, and Carly Ann West knew this. She also knew how to write a likable protagonist, as even though Oscar isn't the perfect kid and does some stupid stuff, he does enough to make up for it. You still end up rooting for him. Something else that separates this story from so many others is that it has a happy ending. Oscar overcomes the evil. For some reason, FNAF writers seem to think FNAF readers always want the villains to win, which just leads to a lot of stories that feel mean-spirited by the end of it. I get these are horror stories, but this story on its own proves you can tell a good horror story where nobody dies, except for presumably whoever's eyes and teeth are in plush trap. It also harkens back to other, more conventional horror stories, the most obvious one being Child's Play. But in a way, having a talking doll you can reason with versus a talking doll you can't really does make it seem like a more hostile and imminent threat. I'll say this, even though Out of Stock is amazing for Fazbear Frights, it's what I would call only a good horror story outside of that context. Part of it is the fact that Isaac and Raj really don't get much development at all, and I don't think there's enough scenes with Oscar and his mother to really show how their relationship, though loving, is ultimately flawed. Basically, the story never spends enough time on individual scenes for them to really stand out as anything else than above average when it comes to horror. One other complaint I have is that for some reason, this was the first Fazbear Fright story to not get any additional artwork in some form. Any art you see depicting the story came out well after the fact, and most of it is inaccurate to the story itself. Even in Security Breach, there's an arcade cabinet based on this story, and they still messed it up. Regardless, any criticisms I have of Out of Stock are minor. I really did enjoy the story. It was fun, dark, but not edgy. Scary, but not excessive. And mysterious, but not vague. 
If you do want to know who created Plush Trap, you should keep watching, but if you do want to keep it a secret from yourself, skip to this time now. Or, uh, just stop watching. I don't have a lot to say. <laughs> Plush Trap was created by Eleanor, who is the Fazbear Frights equivalent to Circus Baby, and that is such a lame revelation. I mean, Eleanor does tie almost every story in the series together, but I kinda wish that Plush Trap was just kept out of this. In my mind, it would be better for some unknown original character to have created it, or at the very least some version of Afton. As it stands, it reads more like Cawthon trying to tie the Plush Trap story into Eleanor's story rather than having it been planned out in some way. I know I'm criticizing Baby's first scary story here, but this is one of those instances where people should be reminded that not everything has to be tied into everything. Well, I think that just about covers why I think Out of Stock is the best Fazbear Fright story. Ultimately, it's just very entertaining. It doesn't fall into the same pitfalls other Fazbear Fright stories do. It repurposed a bad character into a good one, and gave them a great story to strut their stuff. In a climax, some stories can only dream of pulling off like this one did. I'd highly recommend Book 2 of Fazbear Frights in general as Fetch, Lonely Freddy, and this one are all some of the highest quality fright stories out there. Maybe if this video does well, I'll talk about those another time. Until then, I'm Demuted. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share around.